Okay. Tell me what have we got on our plate today? I'm just reviewing from the 13th of December. Okay, well, Your Honor, we're set today on the uh, hearing on the merits of the anti slap motion. Uh, uh, Plaintiff's counsel uh, had a uh, motion for continuance of that hearing on file. Uh, I sent you a letter uh, yesterday uh, anticipating that the continuance motion could uh, eat up into the court's very valuable time, and we will once again walk away without hearing the merits of the motion that was properly set before you. Uh, I sent the letter outlining uh, most of uh, the reasons and the rationale as to why continuance is uh, improper at this time, Your Honor. Uh, but I kind of say the best for last, quite candidly, uh, if the court has a copy of the plaintiff's motion to continue the hearing on the anti-slap motion, I have a courtesy copy of my hand it to you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Now, Mr. Well, Jeffrey. Probably the courtesy to give it back to you. Okay, no problem. Mr. Jeffrey has already alerted us to the fact that he wants to announce not ready. Um, if you'll take a look at that motion, Your Honor, I think the first argument that you may have to entertain, move on, and then let me do my, my merits motion, is that you can't announce not ready on a motion that is uh, improper and deficient. Uh, this is their motion for uh, a continuance. Uh, if you look at the title of a judge, it's their motion to continue the hearing on the anti-slap motion. Uh, and of course, he's referring to the various motions of myself and the other parties uh, that are defendants that have joined. If you please turn, Your Honor, to the affidavit of Mr. Ray, uh, which appears a few pages back. Uh, he attaches an affidavit uh, in support of Mrs. Rathbun's motion to compel and for continuance of a special appearance here, not the anti-slap. He's got an unverified, therefore, motion for continuance that he filed an affidavit in another matter that has nothing to do uh, with the motion that is properly set before you today. And uh, additionally, Your Honor, on a motion where I'm not the moving party, uh, Mr. Jefferson is the moving party uh, on behalf of uh, those co-defendants on the special appearance, as you well know. So the rule is very, very clear, Your Honor. You can't grant a continuance unless it's properly verified. Uh, you're here with a defective motion that is not properly verified. I don't think it's a matter of your discretion uh, to uh, allow them a King's X and get by with it. And uh, in addition, uh, the reasons that I uh, pointed out to you uh, on my letter of yesterday, Your Honor, uh, again, to go to the substance of the anti-slap motion, what it says about discovery, what kind of discovery uh, may be permitted if they meet their burden to establish the necessity of it. And even if you wanted to avoid this fatal defect and, and, and look beyond it, uh, you take a look at the discovery that they are seeking. Uh, leading first and foremost with the deposition of Mr. Miscavige, and then a list of documents and, and a motion, uh, uh, a deuce is taken, I imagine, that would come with depositions and a motion for production, that Your Honor is uh, running afoul of, of the clear mandate of the uh, anti-slap uh, statute. The anti-slap statute says that if they prove to you that they are entitled to additional discovery. And they have to do it with their affidavits and so forth, not an evidentiary hearing uh, at all. If they prove to you, Your Honor, it has to be specifically targeted discovery, not that it could lead to the discovery of relevant evidence, as is the standard in normal discovery, but very specific <coughs> discovery that would help them meet their burden under the statute of a prima facie case on the causes of action they have filed with clear and specific evidence. And when we get into my presentation, uh, I've got, I've got uh, uh, an outline of, of how the statute operates and the case law that exists uh, that establishes that this is a heightened burden uh, on, on their uh, uh, requirement if they want to not have the statute apply they have to establish their prima facie case on the elements of each element of their causes of action. 
Your Honor, I need to make an objection. I've been waiting for him to take a breath, and he has not taken a breath. Your Honor, do I it have the floor my, or do I not, it, it is, He should not have the floor. It yes, is my Your Honor, announcement of the and please. my motion for continuance. Now, this is getting recorded because we can only take down one at a time. And, Your Honor, I think it's proper that you hear whether or not they've got a proper motion for continuance before we waste a lot of time okay. on a motion for continuance that's defective. So I think I should have the floor okay. first. Okay. May I conclude? May I conclude, Your Honor, without interruption? Yes, sir. Thank you. I mean, I've gotten the point. Well, then I'll stop, Your Honor. Mr. Jeffrey. Thank you, Your Mr. Honor. This is the first time. I've got a question. Oh. Just as to the motion to continue the anti-SLAPP hearing, the affidavit that was attached not only in moniker mentions the special appearance hearing, but in substance as well, it addresses issues regarding the jurisdiction. Obvious mistake, Your Honor. That's the same verification or affidavit that was attached to the special appearance. I don't know why it is attached rather than the correct one. But Mr. Cedillo's statement that you don't have any discretion is incorrect. The court always has discretion. I will be happy if the court would allow me a trial amendment. I'll write out a verification and sign it subject to the penalties of perjury. And, Your Honor, I don't think that's fair to my client who was prepared to go forward with the anti-SLAPP motion once before. We're prepared again. I think the equitable thing to do is to allow me to present the merits of my motion in the amount of time that the court is going to give me to do it. If they want to use their time after I present my motion to urge a continuance, before the day is done, you're free to do whatever you want to do. But I do not believe that counsel is correct. I haven't read the motion to continue it yet, so let me just take a second to do that. And, Mr. Jeffrey, then I'll let you more fully respond. Remember the precise date, Mr. Jeffrey, but what is right now based upon my December ruling about the court's docket being full as it was right before the holidays? That it would extend the time, was it like January 17th or something like that, to at least initiate the Annie Slap motion hearing? Yes, Your Honor, except if the court hears our request for discovery and grants us discovery. And by the way, we're scaling back what we're asking for merely to document production and not to any of the depositions. But if the court allows that, then we have until the middle of February. Is it not permissible to initiate the 
any slap hearing and possibly just continue it so that you might be allowed to obtain that discovery, that production, before we conclude the hearing? If, if they satisfy their requirements under the statute that the discovery that they're requesting is proper, uh, I believe that's probably an option the court could have. But I, I, I think I know where the court is going. You, you let me present the substance of my motion. I address the discovery issue in that substance. And that's what I was alluding to about earlier, Your Honor. Uh, you give me my time to put on the motion, and you'll see that the statute disfavors the kind of discovery that they're asking for. And I don't know what they're stating back or not. I, I know what they filed a motion for continuance asking for certain kind of discovery, and I responded to that. I'm not on notice to anything else, number one. Number two, Your Honor, he didn't answer specifically your, your question on the timetable. When we were here on December 17th, this is in my letter of yesterday where I set out the procedural history. Uh, the deadline based on your docket would have been extended an additional 30 days to January uh, the 16th of this year. That's why you told us to go back and find a date that fits your docket between the 6th and the 16th. And this is the day that fits your docket. Uh, we've got this date because the others were not available. I believe we have the, the, the trial starting this week, or, or your clerk informed us. I'll, I'll know tomorrow. So we pick this day, Your Honor, and we very much would like to go forward with it. If, if, if throughout the course of this hearing, if, if uh, uh, Mr. Jeffrey ends up being able to convince you that uh, he's got some discovery he's entitled to, we think the statute doesn't allow him that, and I want you to hear my argument on that. But at the end of, of, of the hearing, you're free to do, of course, what, what, what the court thinks best. But by all means, Judge, we, we've been hijacked many times before yeah. the substance of our motions, and we want to go forward with it. Your Honor, may I, I? I really haven't gotten to speak on this whole issue of the continuance. I, I would like at some point to respond. That's so why I was trying initially to get kind of the parameters of the timetables and the propriety, if you will, of beginning the hearing and to the degree it is developed that it might be necessary to then continue to recess the hearing to go out for the discovery so that then you could respond to what they would actually argue on the record if necessary or if appropriate at all. I'm not saying that it ultimately would be. I don't know. Well, uh, As if, opposed to just resetting the whole thing. That would be your if, call, Your Honor. It, it, first of all, I, I need to respond to a couple of things. One is King's X. The only thing I can figure out that happened with regard to the verification or affidavit is the special appearance rule requires a verified motion for continuance. We did that. The, um, the uh, anti-slap statute does not require a verified uh, uh, motion for continuance. Instead, it just requires that you ask the court and show the court good cause why you should be allowed to do some discovery. So it, the, the King's X does not work here, first of all. Next, um, this is their constant strategy, which is, judge, let us go first and don't hear from the other side. They've already done it this morning. It's Ray Jeffrey or the plaintiff's motion for continuance and announcement of not ready, but let me argue it first. Um, I need to explain to the court exactly what the situation is, and then so the court will understand that there is good cause to do some very limited discovery. We already know what it is. We know what they haven't given us. And if they would just cough the stuff up, by the way, they agreed to do discovery in connection with the special appearance. Not the they, have never, they have never produced the documents which were called for with regard to the special appearance that would also allow us to prove what we need to prove on the anti-slap. Your Honor, may, I, may I, 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 I have to interrupt, Your Honor. I have to interrupt, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, under Rule 251, continuance, I mean, I, I need to know what rules apply in this court. We'll call back to the normal rules. Okay, the 251 says it has to be supported by affidavit. That's the end of the analysis, Your Honor. This is all a waste of time. 251 was not complied with. 
Well, Your Honor, again, 251 I, I, is the is the rule of procedure that applies in this court as it does in all the Texas courts, Your Honor. And it's a very simple matter. You rule that they haven't complied with 251, and we get on with the merits. You are perfectly correct, Your Honor. If in the course of today you decide that you think they ought to be entitled to something, we can deal with that. But all he's doing is what he has always done. This is his playbook I'm objecting to. They come here, and, and the proof is in the pudding. You've never heard the merits of the special appearance. But Your Honor, I this is so long that an track. objection. It's a filibuster. Well, Judge, now, 251, I'm asking you to rule, Your Honor. The, the first, first of all, and I, I would ask then if that's required, which it doesn't say in the statute, that I be allowed to make a trial amendment to verify that. They're on full notice of what our, what our motion is. Second, you know, the very first uh, case I ever had with these folks, George Spencer got up in an evidentiary hearing and argued after his opening statement that I should not be allowed to make an opening statement. Because again, their perpetual position is, let us show you first, don't allow them any discovery or any right to be heard, and you'll see that, that we're so clearly in the right, you'll rule in our favor. That's not the adversarial system. Would it not, though, Mr. Jeffrey, in effect, to the degree, if ever necessary, bolster or protect the record to have knowledge on the record of their position as to anti-slap and then to be able to appropriately limit and define based upon what is presented what you may need? That would be true if they had not filed extensive anti-slap materials. If you'll recall, Your Honor, Mr. Cedillo made a big deal about bringing you an entire banker's box with their motion. All of their stuff is there. You're supposed to decide this based upon the affidavits and declarations. So that's already in front of the court. The court can just go read everything if, if that's all that is. But I would like to demonstrate to the court what it is we need and why we need it with regard to this. And there are very important constitutional considerations that come in with an anti-slap motion that are built into the rules to give us some level of protection. I haven't got to argue the motion for continuance yet. I would like to argue it, and then he can respond if I mean, he wants. Is there an affidavit that was prepared that just didn't get attached? I don't know what the answer is. Uh, this was a surprise. He stood up. It was a gotcha. I didn't realize. I assume that there's one, but I'd be happy to write one out and sign it subject, you know, as a declaration subject to the penalties of perjury. And Judge, I think the only fair thing to do is what you're indicating is, is perhaps the way to proceed. Let me present the merits of my motion. It's my turn. Beyond, beyond the affidavits that have already been extensively filed, and I've still got the box back there in my office. What is there testimony to be presented? No, Your Honor. An anti-slap motion is decided on the declarations and the, the, the papers before you. The whole purpose of the anti-slap motion, Your Honor, is the legislature purposely created a device to get rid of cases if it's appropriate. You'll see in my presentation the statute is written in terms of the court shall dismiss. It's not a May situation. And it does not allow the, the normal civil procedure discovery. Uh, it is a heightened burden for them to come to you and request discovery. The, the, the statute is supposed to be operating on a very, very short time frame. That's why we have these deadlines that, that we've had to deal with uh, uh, in the past. Okay. Well, but the court effort, is there discovery <coughs> being requested relative to the anti-slap motion? Yes, and in fact, it's already been requested in connect that it would fall within what was requested in connection with the special appearance. So it's not anything new. And I sent letters to them. And at the last hearing, um, we said, "Well, you would the, the defendants were to treat those items that I specified and narrowed down, treat those as requests for production and respond to them in the ordinary course of business, which they have not done." And the answer to that, Your Honor, is that was maybe proper discovery under a Rule 120A motion for special appearance. If you'll let me present the content of the statute to you, you will see 
that that is not the scope of discovery that the statute may consider or that you, in applying the statute, may consider appropriate. It's not the kind of discovery that they could send me in any other motion dealing with any other matter. The anti-SLAPP is its own creature, and you have to apply heightened standards, and we do not believe that the requests that are on the record that we've been made notice of, defective motion or not, uh, they included in their motion for continuance what they wanted. I haven't seen any pared down list as to the, the, the anti-SLAPP. I don't need to see it. I know, Your Honor, that the, the statute disfavors it. They don't want you doing a bunch of discovery. It's, it's, a, it's like, a, a, like a rocket docket summary judgment. It is uh, very specific in limiting the discovery and very specific on the requirements they have to meet to show that they're entitled to discovery. And if you'll let us go forward and present the merits, when it's his turn, if he wants to make all those arguments, and if you're persuaded, uh, then, then you're free to do what you, what you think is right. But what, let me go forward. What's the statute? It's uh, 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 chapter 27, Your Honor, of the uh, Civil Practice and Remedies Code. <laughs> if you'll let me make my presentation, Your Honor, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the specifics uh, on, on what the discovery requirements are. And, and Your Honor, I'm asking that I be allowed to give my presentation or explanation to the court for why it is that we need a continuance. 27006, Your Honor, uh, under the section titled Evidence, uh, subsection B of 27.006, on a motion by a party or on the court's own motion or on the showing of good cause, the court may allow specified and limited discovery relevant to the motion. And there's, there's authority as to what that means that is, uh, is embedded in my presentation. Again, so, Judge, I think the approach that you're suggesting, uh, uh, if, if, if you think that's the way to go after you hear it, uh, you're, you're free to go down that road. But, Your what's Honor, the, Eric, yeah, sorry. what's the downside to based upon the affidavits, the evidence they've presented, to then helping us to properly refine and limit whatever discovery you might have in order to respond, then is there a downside to that? Yes. What First of all, Your Honor, thus far both parties have put everything that they can put on the table in terms of anti-slap motion and response to anti-slap motion. So the issues are drawn. Let's be honest about where we are today. We're in the courtroom on the issue of persuasion. Both sides want to persuade the court based upon the evidence and the law. So my point would be this. I don't think that Mr. Cedillo can have his cake and eat it too. If we were to begin it, he then could not object to your amending your affidavits or in adding to it, can't you? What my point is, because I am trying to, just, we need to get this okay. moved on down the road, slowly, methodically, incrementally, as we've talked about before in a number of different we, I understand what he, he's addressing. In. I understand what the court is suggesting, and and, and I see the the, the the merit in what you're saying, but I do want to make this point, which is that. Um, there are two sides to the issue that Mr. Cedillo is only telling you one side. One side is that uh, in a conventional slap situation, it's supposed to be expedited. And that is to protect the victim from being crushed by the litigation itself, the expense of the litigation. That's the conventional situation. And the courts, including in the Wallersheim slap case against the Church of Scientology, um, the court made the point that we try to expedite these things to protect someone from, from being harmed. However, there's two protections that we have as the plaintiffs in the case, even in an upside-down case like this. 
there, there are two protections that we have. One protection is they have a heavy burden, and we have a light burden. That is, they have to prove by right, preponderance of the evidence, and we have to just show a prima facie case. That's it. Number two, um, there is a safety valve for the court to allow uh, discovery. The reason being, the plaintiff has due process rights and open court's rights. So the court has to balance it. It's not just rush the plaintiff to the courtroom and, and uh, put them to the test. The reason why we need discovery is that, and we already know it because we know what it is, and we filed a motion for sanctions against them. The discovery that's been done thus far, there's been perjury, there's been withholding of documents, etc. What we need is to show that this whole First Amendment claim that they're making is a pure 100% pretext. And they have troves of documents, text messages, emails, reports, etc. that shows what they were really doing at the time they were running this operation against the RAF funds. To date, we have been given zero. We know, we know that they exist, and we found a smoking gun. We filed a motion for sanctions on that, which is not set for today. And in that, it, that is, we've got 20-something pages of text messages between the Pope of Scientology, foul-mouthed, hectoring text messages, browbeating his subordinates in OSA you know, over the handling. And I'm going to have to respond. But the point is, Your Honor, we have ample indication that there is in fact and the practice is to have text messages and emails etc exactly what we're claiming in the case and the point is judge if you let me make my presentation on first amendment law that comes from the united states supreme court all of this motivation stuff that he is making up doesn't matter it doesn't matter and it isn't a light burden on them and I've got in my presentation the authority. Okay. We have to put on a... a uh, well, the question that I really am trying to get answered from Mr. Jeffrey is what is the downside to allowing them to take their best shot in their presentation and to the degree necessary that will, that will assist the court? I would presume it might assist anybody and everybody, including the respondent to that any staff motion to limiting and refining the discovery that might be necessary. And I'm just wondering, I'm trying to figure out, that's why I wanted to open the statute up at the Supreme Memory Code, I wanted to find the precise chapter and section so I could look at it. And that's, that it's embedded in my presentation, Judge, I'm going to walk you through it. But I'm wanting to know, what, is there a downside to that? methodology that so then then they would make their presentation and then at that I'll determine if there's because I to be honest with you I haven't had an opportunity to digest that box of information mm -hmm. after they and otherwise if they present it. And it would be without prejudice to us to urge. Right. And I don't think he can say King's X, I'm gonna present my motion and then you're not gonna give been given an adequate opportunity to respond. And it, it's not up to me at that point to say King's X or not, Your Honor. That, that, that's your call. But I have the right to point out that the statute... Would the rules preclude the court from then refining the discovery? Quite frankly, Your Honor, I think that if you are within the timetable that the, the, the rules call for, and there is uh, an extension of the timetable, when they show that they're entitled to legitimate proper discovery under uh, under the anti-slap, and if you agree that they are, as long as that discovery and the determination is done within the confines of, of the timetable that is set there, because you don't get to push it past uh, the, the extension because you found the discovery might be proper. So then uh, I think would, you're free to do What would that date be? Uh, that was in my letter, Your Honor. I think that mid-February was, uh, was uh, we confirm, you know, the way we should it, it, it operates. That's for the completion of the entire hearing. Yes, sir. It's February the 15th. 
Yes, sir. That that yeah. The, yeah. The, the, if, if if you grant discovery, if you think if they meet their burden on I don't know yet. on on the state, yes, and that's why I think we're too bold in the first sense. He hasn't answered your question. Is there a downside? I think that's very telling. Judge, may I ask a question? Mr. Jeffers is going to get into I don't know some material issues in this case. Are we still going to have the video camera going, or are we going to go ahead and let that? No, we're getting ready to take a break, and then while they're still huddling, I will just say that anybody that's counsel or paralegal or assisting counsel that wants to use electronic devices needs to be in front of the rail basically just from here on out and uh, just everybody else that needs to take notes of some sort can do so with pencil and paper behind the rail but all electronic devices behind the rail just need to be off. Sound like the airplane we're getting ready to take off. <laughs> you know Judge they're letting you to keep it on now as long as you're an airplane <laughs> <laughs> Jeffries, I don't know yet, but I'm just thinking top of my head as far as the court schedule, time frames involved in the statute. Assuming they make their presentation, which would with your response entitle you to some discovery, assuming that would be the case, I would think for dealing with requests for production. That's what you're thinking. It's yes, the just document. That you might need. We would, might have to shorten the time frame of the discovery rule so as to comply with this motion, correct? If they meet the, the heavy burden. Uh, I mean, if I can't have to extend the time you can the do any slap motion hearing, I've got to probably shorten the time frame. You have that power, Your Honor, so I'm trying to get to Under. that. I think the 199 or whatever series of rules regarding this, 96, 97, whatever they are. I think the, 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 the time parameter set by the statute, I think, uh, supports the conclusion that you've got to do what you got to do to meet that. In other words, like today is the 8th. Say, pick a day like the 20th or 21st, something like that for this gift. Some discovery is authorized under this statute might be, you know, some week of the 20th of February, so as to make sure that they would have an adequate opportunity to get a motion to compel heard before we could get to this hearing on 12, 13, 14. We can talk 15. about that after they satisfy the burden that they're entitled to discuss. And our motion for sanctions is set, I believe, on the 22nd, 21st, 22nd. <coughs> Your Honor, with that, yes, sir. Uh, one thing I'd like a clarification on. If um, if we present our anti-slap motions today, uh, Mr. Jeffrey has just said that all of the affidavits and all the declarations that he intends to file have been filed. I want to make sure that if I open up my entire case and I make my entire arguments, that I don't see another 14 or 15 affidavits and declarations and amended declarations and everything else, because that would be unfair to us for him to be able to keep continuing to do that after this hearing. So if he's just talking about having documents produced and he's going to give you documents, I don't have a problem with it. But if he's going to be coming back with all these rapid third amended declarations, 
Are those documents in and of themselves cognizable evidence in an annex lab? I have no idea because I don't know what he's talking about. <coughs> but what I do understand is every time that somebody files something, then Monique Rathman has her third or fourth or fifth amended declaration, and then Mark Rathman has his. Mm -hmm. What I don't want to do is open up my entire argument and then have and Just in general, are there some documents that might be produced? Not that I'm aware of. That would be admissible. For, these uh, for our position is going, uh, let me see the request of Judge No. I mean, the, the issues that the anti slap zero in on the aggression are purely legal matters. They want to, for, all you've heard is that he's alluding to, I can show you smoking guns that say that, you know, they had a black heart and black motive uh, malice in their hearts. Judge, the case law, it couldn't be clear. The motivation, the intent, none of that matters on the exercise. And I mean, I, I can allude very quickly to it. Do you think those Ku Klux Klan and those Nazis that are burning crosses uh, uh, don't have black motives in their hearts to cause pain to Jews and blacks and Catholics? Of course they do. And the Supreme Court of the United States has said that we as a society have made certain elections on the freedoms of expression and in spite of that malice existing and it doesn't he's making all that up but even if you want to entertain the argument that it does your honor proper application of supreme court law says that that doesn't matter and so why would a, a, a document or a deposition or any discovery be relevant that's why the statute says they've got a heightened burden to to to, to present to you uh, to justify why they need. And they have to very specifically identify what that evidence that they think they can develop for you to allow discovery. And uh, from what they file their request, it doesn't come close to meeting the requirements of the statute. And it, it's, it isn't proper. And the anti slap statute is written to circumvent all that stuff and just have you apply the law. That's why I call it a rocket docket summary judgment. And, and I will object to, to uh, uh, I will insist that they meet that discovery because that is the right that I have under the statute. And I will flesh all of this out, I promise. Okay, well, Your Honor, he didn't answer the question you asked, which is, or other, well, I guess he said no, we can take that. You said, well, what if you all prove doc, uh, you produce documents which contradict your burden on the slap motion? Are those admissible? I say yes. We have very little case law on this, but if you look at it, Your Honor, subpart A on evidence, that's CPRC 27.006. It says, it describes the conventional situation where you have the rocket docket, there's no discovery, and the court decides it based upon uh, supporting and opposing affidavits. Okay? Then it goes on in B and says, on a motion by a party or on the court's own motion and on a showing of good cause, the court may allow specified and limited discovery relevant to the motion. That would make the rule ridiculous, what they're arguing, which is that the court could allow discovery, but then the fruits of the discovery could not be used on the anti-slap motion. That makes no sense. That wasn't my argument. I'm arguing exactly what the statute says. They've got to show you that they need specific, relevant, limited discovery. But then he objects when I try to make my presentation on why we do need that. Your Honor, I'm suggesting that he can use his time any way he wants to, the court permits him. Let me make my motion, and then as the court has already indicated four separate times now, uh, in, in the course of his presentation, if he thinks he can satisfy his heavy burden of allowing discovery, of getting discovery allowed by you, in this case, he's free to make it. But, I mean, he, he's misreading the law, and he's misapplying what the statute says, and with the authority that we do have on this statute, which I'm ready and willing to, to present to you, say on this topic. Assuming they already had it, and they, they got it from discovery from a party, as a statement of that party, I mean, can they not file an affidavit saying this is what we received in discovery? That goes to that goes to the point co-counsel is raising here, Your Honor. 
the issue is joining. We're here for the hearing. Uh, the discovery that they're looking for, if, if, if they meet the heightened uh, requirement that uh, gets you to say that they're allowed it, okay, that is the self-contained universe of what the additional discovery is going to be. Uh, I, I think what, what we're trying to ask the court, and I, I join in that request without assuming it, and, and now I'm articulating it, that uh, if, you, if they met that burden, in your view, and you allowed limited discovery, that that doesn't mean that we get you know, a, a whole new round of declarations and affidavits from, from people that they, sua sponte, are putting together and bringing before you. Because we've already answered based on but it, all the only of thing I would entertain would be as far as subsequent mm -hmm. filing. Say that this is what we got from the other side. I don't have a problem. Okay. I don't have a problem. Mr. Sudio okay. made. I'm not I, I'm not speaking for him. But what I don't want to see is when I stand up and make my arguments for defendant Bonnie Gray, that they come back and with another amended supplemental whatever. To refute what we've argued today because we've already been here once, judges, or twice. This is not something that we open our case up and then let them go through all the discovery and file a bunch of other information. And I'm so saying the judge thing, thing. just limit it to that. I don't have a problem. I, Otherwise, we need to have it heard today. I'm saying the same thing, Your Honor. If you allow the discovery, and that's a big if, then whatever we uh, uh, get in that discovery is, is what you allow, and not any additional re thinking, new theories, new affidavits to respond to something that we have. with that understanding, is there any downside? Yes, Your Honor, there, there is a downside. Uh, Mr. Dunnigan filed his objections to our, our evidence last night. And if we haven't had a chance to properly review it, when we do, if, there are, if we think there are holes in our evidence, we want to submit additional declarations. Well, and, 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 and you know, if, if, if on the one hand they're saying we don't we don't think that there's a, a, you're allowed to have a discovery and we can object to your your evidence and you can't respond to that, then it, you know it makes a you know kind of a travesty of the adversarial system when we've just got these objections. And, and if I might respond, Your Honor, I got their response uh, that we were going to argue on the 11th at 8 p.m. on the 10th. Okay. And I had to show up ready to argue the anti-slap motion on the 11th after I got that. Um, we've had the holidays and stuff. I didn't have an opportunity to even draft my objections. And now I have drafted them, and I'm assuming it's local rule where you serve things on people the night before the morning of. But if that's appropriate, I've done what's appropriate. I've got objections to their evidence, and they should have already submitted what they wanted the court to consider in proper form. It's not for them to come back now and say, well, let us redo it, let us revise all this and come back another day and fight over this. And we're, here to, we're here to argue the motion today. We got our dancing shoes on, Judge, like you said. And I don't want him to take them away from us, but don't give him an opportunity to come back 30 days from now and provide a lot of other information. Well, I'll just have to make rulings on what's presented to me, but in my anticipation, that the biggest problem, Mr. Jeffrey, that I've got is y'all certainly could have formally sent request for uh, We're not allowed to, Your Honor. Under the statute, we're not allowed to until the court gives us the green light. Well, they could ask for leave. Well, Judge, they, they, that's a little disingenuous, Your Honor, because they did exactly that in their motion for continuance. Right. Well, they, I guess what I'm thinking of is that they can certainly ask for it and y'all could provide it or object to it, saying they didn't get leave for it. Actually, Your Honor, they, they, to the extent that they can ask for it is after you have given them the parameters of what it is that you're going to allow discovery, because it's not discovery well, like I guess my point is everything is legal until somebody complains about it. So I'm sure. Well, in depositions, they already made that clear. If I would ask questions, they would say that would be on the slap motion, and you can't ask about that. Well, because um, the discovery you allow is on jurisdiction. Well, one of the things that it, it feels sort of Alice in Wonderland here on this, because the whole concept of this rocket docket, and we've got to hurry up and do this, is based upon this premise. If you have uh, the classic slap situation where 
Walmart is building a store down the road from someone's home, and they don't like Walmart, and they write letters to the editor, and they carry a sign saying, keep Walmart out, and they petition their city council and their county commissioners, and Walmart says, we're the biggest corporation in the world. We know how to deal with this, and they slam them with a law, that person with a lawsuit. The reason, you know, I, I have a rule. The law makes sense. The reason why the general slap situation has an accelerated docket to it is John Q. Citizen, who was just writing to his representatives that he didn't want Walmart to get their permit down the road, he will be crushed by merely having to try to respond to a lawsuit. He can't do that. He doesn't have the money to hire a lawyer. That they have between 15 and 20 lawyers here today. They're overwhelming us with papers and objections and this and that and the other thing. That's the whole, excuse me. That, that is the whole point. He's been arguing that the purpose is accelerated activity. We're supposed to hurry up. Your Honor, well, why is that? My purpose it is, is on the face of the statute. Your Honor, he's interrupting. Which Alice in Wonderland is the only thing he's making now. I understand. Well, and I'm going to have to deal with objections to any affidavits or discovery that's filed or response to the discovery that's filed additional affidavits because they come. I can't predict what there is or what is not. But I'm willing to go forward Thank you, Your Honor. today and let them present this case and we will recess giving you the opportunity and I'll just have to deal with the objections that y'all received, the plans received last night, to the evidence that was previously, or affidavits previously filed, et cetera, mm -hmm. as we get to them. The only, respectfully, Your Honor, the only request I would have to that procedure that you outlined is that don't make the conclusion now that you're going to recess after my case. Why don't you listen to my presentation, and if I can show you what these authorities are, okay. and you reach the conclusion that that nothing they're, they're going to be entitled to discovery, then they go forward and put on their case and, and, and we stay within the timetable of the section. Will request. we be allowed to respond and make our argument then for why we're allowed, we should yes, be yes. allowed to discover? Yes, that's what, I, that's what I understand the court to be proposed. Yes, that's my mode of action. That's With, with, we understand if that's how the court would like to proceed, Your Honor, and using the court's uh, available time resources, as long as we're not waiving anything. May I proceed, Your Honor? Your Honor, as long as we're not waiving anything by, by merely by doing that. That we still can argue that we should be allowed some additional time and to get some discovery from that. That's previously stated. That's Thank my you. thought process. I'm not going to object because that's how they're going to use their time, Your Honor, because I understand what the court wants to do. Okay. Well, just with that being said, let's just make sure that all the electronics behind the rail are off and out of the courtroom. Mm -hmm.